I'm sorry. The midwives were rang in my ear. I already knew my baby was dead. There was no heartbeat visible on the scan. How I hated scans. You see, this was my sixth pregnancy. The first ended almost as soon as it began. I fell pregnant again the following month and gave birth to a very healthy baby boy two weeks before my due date. My third pregnancy ended in week 34. A beautiful baby girl, born still, due to placental insufficiency. My fourth pregnancy ended four and a half months later at 10 weeks. That was followed 11 months later by a successful but very nervous fifth pregnancy, which resulted in the birth of another beautiful baby girl, this one healthy. So here I was, week 10, and yet again my baby had died, probably in week 8. Then came the practicalities. I was told by the midwife to go and empty my bladder so she could do an internal scan to ensure that there was indeed no heartbeat. I was confused. With my previous miscarriage, I had been Doppler scanned to see if there were any blood flow between the forming placenta and baby. My mind wandered. Was there no set procedures for this? I had to leave the scanning room to go to the toilet. This meant being seen in my upset state by other parents-to-be. Finally, when the internal scan revealed no heartbeat, we were free to go, this time having to walk past the parents-to-be who were awaiting their scan. Prior to leaving, I was asked what I wanted to do. The midwife was referring to the baby that had refused to abort itself and instead had become a missed miscarriage. However, I was in no mind to make a decision. All I knew was that I wanted out of there. I wanted to run away. How could this be happening again? I waited over the weekend for the baby to physically miscarry, but nothing happened. I was on maternity leave following the birth of my daughter 11 months earlier and due back at work three weeks later. I was advised by the midwife that it could take up to six weeks to miscarry naturally. I didn't want to be returning to work with this hanging over me. I didn't want a DNC where they scraped the lining of the womb to remove the product. So I made the decision to ask for the tablets to bring on an artificial, spontaneous miscarriage. This is then followed two days later by a visit to hospital for a procedure where pessaries are inserted in to bring on the physical miscarriage. When I phoned the midwife and told her of my decision, I was told that I couldn't have the tablets that day, that someone else was booked in for a miscarriage. My immediate thought was, so we have to book our damned miscarriages now. A short time later, the midwife called back and advised me that I could, after all, have the tablets that day and was booked in for the miscarriage two days later. Two days later, accompanied by my husband, I went into hospital to undergo the same procedure that someone who opts for an abortion before week 12 goes through. There's a special room at the hospital for having miscarriages in. They have tried to make the room homely and not clinical. It took several hours, but eventually I passed my baby, all two centimetres of it. I didn't realise that I would see it. It was amazing. I felt an awe of Mother Nature, but grief-stricken at my loss. With my miscarriage came the ending of my hopes and dreams. Pregnancies like that. The minute you get that blue line or the word pregnant on a pregnancy test, your hopes, dreams and aspirations for that unborn baby start. When you miscarry, they're so quickly torn from you. Weeks later, we found out that it was a girl. Madison, that was what we were going to call her, and that there were no chromosomal reasons for the loss. The loss, therefore, had to be due to external factors. Finding out the sex of the baby made the experience even more devastating. To my consultant's surprise, I was relieved that there were no chromosomal reasons. You see, I was just short of my 42nd birthday. I didn't want the reason to be age-related. I had come to motherhood late, having my first pregnancy at 37. If the loss had been age-related, I would not have been able to try for another baby. So where am I now, 12 months on? Still trying for another baby, but I'm 43 in a couple of weeks' time, and desperately worried that I'll never have another pregnancy, and at the same time scared that if I do get pregnant, that pregnancy will end in miscarriage. Sex becomes focused totally on pregnancy. And every month when the bleeding starts, depression sets in. Followed a week later by the hope that maybe we'll be successful this month. 
it's a roller coaster. I'm on the date of my miscarriages and their due dates. I see babies and pregnant women everywhere. I congratulate my friends when they announce their pregnancies, but inside I want to poke their eyes out. People can be so insensitive, saying things such as, it's nature's way, as if that's meant to be of some comfort. They say miscarriage is common, and from experience I'm testament to that, but it doesn't make the pain any less, or diminish the want and desire for another baby. People keep telling me that I'm very lucky to have a healthy children, and even luckier to have one of each, and of course they are right. However, I have also lost four children, and those losses bring with them a sadness that only those who have experienced miscarriage know, and a desire to have another baby that goes deeper than you could ever imagine. My motto, don't give up, unless menopause forces me to, of course, but until I reach the ripe old age of 45, whichever comes sooner.